Good morning, and welcome to Wednesday Morning's Matin. The title of my message this morning is Bits and Pieces of Trivia, and here's another little bit of information for you. This is the 52nd year of Matin at Sunrise. Jim brought that idea, we brought it here from Glendive, to the session way back in 1969, and they approved it, and we've been doing it ever since. I think that's a pretty neat record, especially when you stop and think, Glendive no longer does it. <laughs> Let's begin our service this morning by standing and reading the call to worship in unison, and then remain standing for singing the hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today, and you will find verses two and three on the back. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy all our day. And that is from Psalm 90, verse 14. chapter 28 verse 6 he is not here for he has been raised as he said come see the place where he lay Psalm 150 praise the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in his mighty firmament praise him for his mighty deeds praise him according to his surpassing greatness praise him with trumpet sound Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And from John chapter 14, verses 18 and 19. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will also live. Thank you, Marsha. I have missed many things during the pandemic, but some of the things that I have missed the most are quite attractive. 
and choir anthems on Sunday. Choir practice has been a part of my life here at Sunrise for the past 55 years. But thank heavens, we haven't been without music. Miss Kim and Miss Margaret are here on Sunday sharing their musical talent, touching us emotionally where words cannot, and reminding us that music is a prayer the heart sings. I'm going to read that again because I really like that. Music is a prayer the heart sings. Music, another definition says, music clears our heads, heals our hearts, and lifts our spirits. And it certainly does that for me. The Easter message needs music. And so our Matins for today is trivia about a few of the favorite Easter hymns that we sing. The Easter message and song. In previous years, I've used trivia with about other hymns. So, in order to have some fresh ideas, I asked people for their ideas about favorite hymns. So, what you're going to find out are a few bits of trivia and pieces about those favorites. Our first hymn we just sang, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, has the distinction of being sung more than any other song at Easter. Early Christians would greet each other on Easter morning with, Alleluia, the Lord is risen. And it was said that the ceilings of those houses of worship were often shaking when, be when believers enthusiastically sang their praises to God. It was written by Charles Wesley, co-founder of the Methodist Church in 1739, and originally had 11 verses. And, but it didn't make it into the Method, Methodist hymnal until almost 100 years later. And by then, it had been shortened to six verses with the word Alleluia added to each verse so that it fit the tune Easter hymn. The text recites facts of the resurrection. Jesus Christ is risen today. Christ has opened paradise, calls on all creation to share the good news. Sing all heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Now this term follows each line by combining the Hebrew word ha will, which means praise, and the shortened form of the word God or Lord, Ya. So, hallelujah means praise the Lord. Each verse has scriptural content found in Psalm 96, 11, and also in Psalm 148, verse 2. Wesley describes words in this hymn as containing the four requirements that Christians need to enjoy eternal life with God. To know God, to bear witness, to sing one's faith, and to love one another. Our next hymn is Jesus Paid It All. It came to be written by a bored choir member. That, now that never happens on a choir. <laughs> During a church service, a singer Albina Hall, who was a faithful choir member, found that her mind was wandering. And she thought, sorry about this, Pastor Dave, she thought that the pastor's prayer was just a little bit lengthy. <laughs> And on this particular morning, as her mind drifted, Elvina began thinking about God's forgiveness and what Christ had done for her and for others. Thoughts crowded her mind, and she needed to get them on paper before she forgot them. Guess what? 
forth and scrap of paper to be seen. And then she spied the empty fly leaf of her hymnal. And by the sermon's end, she had four verses penned on that lonely little piece of paper. And as I read this, I thought, goodness gracious, when I write poetry, four verses would have meant four pieces of paper. But nevertheless, she had shortened it and gotten those four verses on that one page. Apologizing to the minister after church, Elvine handed him her thoughts and reluctantly admitted that she had been very inattentive during the services. As the minister read her, her poem, he was reminded of music that their organist had written earlier for a poem, but somehow the music and the poem just didn't fit. Reverend Schrick later matched those words that Elvina had written to the unused melodies and found that the words and the music fit together perfectly. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Inattention or coincidence? How would you describe how Jesus paid it all came to be written and matched perfectly to a pre-written melody. Our next hymn is one of the most popular hymns written by the Gaither's writing team. Both teachers, Bill and Gloria, were single and teaching in high school. They began sharing ideas about their songs, Bill writing the music and Gloria writing the lyrics. They were married in 1962 and writing music became a collaborative project between the two. Bill gave up teaching in 1967 and went into working full time in the Christian music industry. This prolific duo has written well over 700 songs. And as a choir member, their songs have often become favorites. And our next hymn is certainly among the top hymns in my list. And I'd like to share right now that Mary Lou loves the Gaither's music. Woody's going to share one of these songs later. And I venture a guess that most of us will be silently singing along with him when he sings, Because He Lives. In an interview, Gloria said that while they were expecting their third child, their family was really undergo undergoing some very trying times. Bill had been recovering from a lengthy bout of mono. These were anxious times. Racial tension, tensions, prevalent drug and rampant drug abuse. And these, among other things, caused Gloria severe mental anguish. Was this the time to bring another baby into this world? Or was this utter foolishness and craziness? Prior or on New Year's Eve, prior to the baby's birth. Gloria was filled with a calming, gentle grace, soothing her fears. Then, after the baby was born, Bill and Gloria remembered the power of the Holy Spirit coming to their aid and helping them to write this song. Words to the second verse bear repeating. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain times because he lives. Because he lives has become one of the most famous Christian songs of our time. This hymn reminds us why Christ came into the world. 
His coming reminds us we can face tomorrow. God does hold the future and makes our life worth the living. Because I live, ye shall live also. And those words are from John 14, verse 19. I hope you'll think about some of these little bits of trivia the next time you sing in one of these three hymns. And now Woody is going to sing for us this morning. And after he has finished, we will stand and read our closing prayer.
now let's stand and read our closing prayer in unison. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, ears to hear you, and voices to sing your praises. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may celebrate your glory and know that we can face the future because of redeeming lives. Thank you, Woody, Tim, Marsha, and John. <laughs>